I miss feeding these fish, y'all. <laughs> like, I mean, it feels like a part of my heart just doesn't beat right because I can't see these big bluegills taking feed. I know one day we'll get back there, but that's one of the things I miss the most. So we had this fish kill out here on July 20th. It's August 3rd or 4th. I don't even know what the day is to be, be real with you. Um, a couple of things I want you to know about what happened out here at the Slab Lab. So we are five acres, relatively shallow. The deepest spot is eight to nine foot and it's a very small spot that's that deep. The rest of the pond is like six foot average depth, okay? So on the morning of July 19th, we had, I think the, the like official weather person said three and three quarters inches, four inches of rain that fell in a 60 minute time period out here. So you've got water temps that the day before were 92 degrees, okay? You've got a cyanobacteria bloom. We get it every year. A lot of ponds deal with it. A lot of public waterways deal with it. Okay, you've got four inches of 55, 60 degree rain that falls into a 92 degree body of water that's relatively shallow and you get the perfect storm. Um, this was a combination of things and it was a total kill. We do not see any signs of life left in this water. You, you've got that cold water coming in, mixing with that very warm water. You've got a high biological oxygen demand, meaning every living thing in this water has a minimum requirement of what it needs to live, to breathe, to respire. Uh, you get a water chemistry mix up because of how shallow the pond is, how much the volume of water that came in reaching the bottom, stirring up sediment, bringing it to the top, just dispersing high levels of ammonia and phosphorus and nitrogen through the entire pond, along with a DO crash, dissolved oxygen, you end up with what happened to us, a total fish kill. What we experienced out here was just the, all the ingredients for the recipe for disaster. We were able to get out several of the decomposing and floating fish, uh, not as many as I would like because three days after this kill, while we're out here netting, we enter into extreme heat warnings. We had heat indexes of 113 to 115 degrees for several days in a row. It was not safe for us to be out here. I'm uh, really honestly with the amount of fish that floated because it was several thousands, there was just no way for me <laughs> to get all of those fish out. And no, Alabama DNR does not clean up fish kills, public or private. It is up to you to do something about it. So anyway, that's the recap. Um, what is what is next? Okay, I'm so glad you asked because we're gonna figure this out together. Uh, this is a huge setback. We had seven years in on trying to grow these magnificent trophy copper nose bluegill. The last three years were the most critical. They were the most productive and the most difficult at the same time, such as growing trophy fish is. You can't have a level of easy without a level of hard, and then it layers on top of each other. And, you know, some days you get to, to have the reward of catching the big fish, and other days you get to have a clean slate because that's what I think we've got. Uh, right now you can see doesn't really look like anything happened out here, right? Like two weeks ago, this was covered with floating fish. I mean, as far as the eye could see, they were everywhere. Uh, so it's, I have to tell you, you know, as sad as it was to see all that, to be able to sit on the main dock out here today and see this and have a cool breeze. Like I'm literally in long sleeves. We had a cold front that came through. To see this, it's so hopeful, guys. Like it's so hopeful. And I don't know how much you remember about how we started this effort, but we were a trophy bass pond. That was what we managed for. That's what we tried to grow was trophy bass and had a kill in 2018. And I know y'all are thinking, oh my God, fish kill after fish kill. You know, sometimes that happens when you're in a steep learning curve and you're trying to figure out what is the correct formula for something. You've got to fail 99 times to find the one way 
that works. And that's kind of the way dad and I operate. We've had to learn a lot of hard lessons. We really have. But the culmination of seven years of everything and anything bluegill leads us to kind of the catbird seat out here. Because now what we do next, one, won't have to be pushed as hard. Two, there won't be opposing species. We won't have to deal with the crappie and thousands and thousands of numbers out here that we're competing with the bluegill for forage and we're just absolutely starting to take over. We've got the potential to really show how we can grow copper nose bluegill in a correct environment and what that growth rate looks like from foundational all the way up to trophy level. I, you know, I'm a betting woman, if I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a betting woman, and I bet the next several months are going to be very quiet out here because there's things we got to do. We got to work on water quality. We got to look at what is it going to take to make this water conducive to aquatic life again. Um, we got to figure out a stocking plan. But I can tell you this, because I am that betting woman, right? I can tell you this. I do believe that we can grow trophy copper nose in a short time frame. Do we think we're going to push the absolute limits? We, well, we won't have to. We won't have to push those limits this time around. We're actually in a really good position. It's really difficult to sit out here and not cast a line and reel in a two pound bluegill. It's really difficult to sit out here and not watch my fish feed. Uh, that has been one of the hardest things for me. I can't even go back and watch the feeding videos right now because I get very emotional. <laughs> I know, it's crazy bluegill lady talk, but it's the truth. I'm glad I have them, and I'm glad I've got seven years of film and pictures and, and had so many fantastic experiences out here. So it's going to be a trek up a mountain and it's going to take time, but you know, I'm looking forward to being able to share a lot of what we do to correct the situation, especially on this scale. I'm looking forward to being able to give factual data this time. Dad and I have always known we can grow fish rapidly and, and honestly, we can do it in record time, but now we're going to get the chance to prove it. These people all across the United States, they, they want to know how to do it how they can do it. And so what a cool opportunity. And that's the way I can look at it today. A couple days ago, I was still ugly crying, but today I can say what a cool opportunity I'm in to be able to showcase this. But as I sit here today, even with a cloudy gray sky, I swear y'all the Slab Lab is still a very special place and one of the most beautiful places. And my heart and soul is in this and I'm not leaving you, I'm not quitting but I'm gonna to have to take some time to get my feet underneath me. And I plan to do that. And I'm gonna do it smarter and wiser and we're gonna do a lot of things differently. Uh, so yeah, I'm super excited to be able to bring all of that to y'all. <laughs> I hope you have a great day and keep in touch with me. I'm gonna get back to what I came out here for, which is to sketch the map of how we build back quite possibly what was at one time the greatest bluegill fishery in the United States. How do we get her back? We gotta figure it out. That takes time. Hope you're here for the long haul. I understand it. If you're not, I know how today's world goes. Everybody wants everything right now. Well, that's not how you grow trophy fish and that's certainly not how dad and I have operated for the last seven years. We've put in the time. We've earned what comes next for us. I'm just telling you that. We've earned it. So anyway, y'all be good. Stay out of trouble. Go fishing. Send me fish pictures. I'd love to see them. I'm going to get back to what I came out here to do, which was map out what the next three to four years of my life looks like pursuing the effort of growing the biggest copper nose bluegill in the world.